hello and welcome. Teachers are indeed the conscience of every society. They shape our character and behavior in elementary school and give us wise advice on career paths in higher grades. And the issue of teacher trainees, uh, I've been going through training, uh, which certainly need to be posted to various classrooms. And licensure has been a thorny issue since this issue came up many months ago. And I'm surprised Mr. President is informing me that issue has still not been resolved. And we are joined by a leader uh, of distant students uh, in the person of uh, Mr. President, uh, Abdul Salam al Hassan. Sir, always a pleasure to have you. Thank you for having How me. Are you doing, I'm sir? doing very well. Yeah, great. I hope you're also doing very well. Um, this issue doesn't seem to have an end in sight, or we don't have an end in sight to this issue. People have politicized it. Some said it's bad when it started, when in fact they had already started the groundwork uh, to possibly implement it. What is the most sincere position on this, and how do you feel as people who have been trained or some who continue to undergo training? And eventually you'd want to serve the country in various classrooms across the country. Okay, thank you, Alhaj. Um, let me give you a little background to this. Um, we know um, digital licensing is, um, is, 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 is constitutional. Um, 2008 Education Act, Act 778, I mean, mandates um, the National Teaching Council as a regulatory body to issue license to teachers. So among other things, they are supposed to set standards for teachers. They are supposed to, um, um, they are supposed to provide support for teacher training institutions to provide the manpower need for, um, for, for the um, tertiary, for our pre-tertiary institutions in this country. Um, somewhere 2018 or so, myself and my colleagues from, uh, my colleague president from UCC and then U University of Ghana met the National Teaching Council boss, the then Dr. Evelyn Udru, to discuss the way forward for students who are studying through distance and open learning. And um, at a discussion, we realized that the policy was uh, meant uh, for good because it was going to set a, an, a, a level ground for both uh, students pursuing their education through distance and open learning and those at the training colleges so that when you complete your uh, training, either, whether, either from the teacher training institutions or the universities, we all sit to write the examination. Whoever passes is... Um, I mean, get recruitment, get posted when there's recruitment, yes. or you apply and then get recruited. Yes. But this has never been the case. Um, last year, for instance, there was uh, some recruitment done, and about 14,000 students, uh, I mean, teacher trainees were recruited. Mm. And in the news, we heard that um, some from the University of Education and UCC, but when you go to the grounds, it doesn't really reflect what's hap really happening on the grounds. I have had interaction with students, um, even just um, last weekend, I had interaction with students who have written the examination and gotten their license, but were not posted. Mm. Um, before um, this year, I'd had a meeting with um, the current boss of NTC, that's Mr. Christian Adaipoku. He's also a nice man, he's, he's, he's very, very, um, he's, 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 he has a vision for the institute, and he, he sounds promising and is ready to work with us to ensure that um, we get a fair share of, our, so, of the um, cake. How is the license exam like? Is it basic mathematics, English, or is it much more complicated than that? Because you don't measure the competence of someone who is going to tutor in a classroom by only arithmetic and grammar. Did you have to, or do they, uh, who have started this exam, continue to broaden the scope of what papers they write, or they are limited to English and math? Yeah, it's English, um, English, math, and general knowledge, in other words, essential skills, which uh, some students have had problems with, because a student, for instance, who is pursuing science and is supposed to write math, just math and English, the person is going to be sad disadvantaged. So why don't you set questions on, for, I mean, on science for that person too? So it's either you, you must be good at uh, math, English, 
or the general knowledge. But for the NTC, they, they, I mean, they believe that is, I mean, it, it should be a foundation for. Um, but is it necessary because you are going to be posted to all pre-tertiary institutions? Some will come up or come out as science teachers. You are going to the laboratory to teach biology. Why would you need another exam on math and you know English? And what is general knowledge? What is general knowledge to someone in the hard sciences? May not be the same for someone in the humanities. Exactly. I think these are some of the issues that um, the National Teaching Council should address. Although I um, I see this licensure exam as welcoming because. Um, it is believed that most teachers, once they get posted or get uh, acquired a job, they, they go to sleep on their books, they don't study anymore. Then why don't you take them the way you take them usually? Then do refresher courses on the job for them. So a science teacher in a, an SHS will do capacity building in physics, chemistry, biology, rather than lumping everybody together to write the same paper. So there is differentiation in those who want to go into the sciences, for example. And then again, at what levels? I want to be a teacher in grade six, for example. Someone wants to be posted to a senior high school. Exactly. Do we sit the same exam? Yes, yeah, so that, um, these are some of the problems that we face. For instance, we have some category of students who, um, who do, we call them, um, um, they do early childhood. They are supposed to teach the Pre school, pre school, pre yes, yes, and they also ask to write the same exams. Yeah, and, and, yes, this is so, so unnecessary. exactly. So, I mean, for instance, last week, some of them were confronted with some of these challenges. That I mean, we don't do mathematics for preschool, we just do, I mean, some basic numeracy. So, why do we go to write, I mean, mathematics? I mean, uh, elect, I mean some sort of questions and sound like they, electing was meant mathematics. No, it's not. I mean, the NTC itself, they said their own questions. An administer. So I think that is. And they mark the grade. They mark the grade. So I think that is the it and the little and challenge so we have there. So only one licensure exam has been written. No, more than one. I it's think. Been more than yes, one. Yes. Yes. I think. And what has have you had any sense of how many people have had the required, you know, or requisite grades? Are we talking eighty percent of all those who sat the exam having passed, or we are talking forty percent? How have people fared in the Lansinger exam? The first one, um, what I read in the news, I don't have the, um, the exact figures handy, but what I read in the news was so that the first one was, I mean, we didn't go re really well, but the second one, I think there was an improvement of, on the performance of those who took the exam. People have to pay a token before they can sit the exam. Yes. You yeah. buy a form. Yes, you, you register online. So and how you much pay. do you pay to register? Um, it, Currently, I don't know how much it, I mean, it's paid. I, I, don't, I think it's hovers around. Um, I'm, very, I'm being careful with the figures. I'm not quite sure. But no, is it refundable if you don't make it? It's not refundable. It's not refundable. So. Then, Mr. President, you and other leaders need to seriously interrogate the motive behind this thing. Because for all you know, trained teachers will run into tens of thousands in exactly. the Republic of Ghana. And if everybody should pay an X amount of money, and only a few, maybe at the end of the day, are taken. What happens to the multitudes that have had to pay? They will go back home and wallow in their unemployment. Exactly. So, you know, um, our challenge has, has always been on the recruitment. So, for instance, if I go to sit for the examination and pass and I get recruited, at least I will have faith in the system. But for distance students, for instance, a lot of them sat for examination, they pass, they have their um, licenses, licenses and still have not been recruited to teach. So what is the purpose for the license? So, I mean, um, we are hoping that uh, going forward, the current uh, leadership of the of NTC, I mean, examines or have a second look at the system so that if, the, um, if there's going to be a, recruit, a good recruitment, then this time should also be given due continuation. Mr. President, I would need to push you to the wall to make any political statements. But honestly speaking, from where you sit, do you think this whole exercise is an exercise in futility? Um, my personal view is that um, it is something that um, initially we saw it as a, a gap bridge between, between the, uh, the colleges, colleges and the universities. And the universities. Yes. If that is really um, addressed, 
if they make it how we expect it to be and what they told us, then I think it, 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 it's, it's a good policy. Because with that, um, you, once you own a license, I think per what the NTC is trying to do, anywhere you travel to with a license, you are recognized as a teacher from Ghana. So you can, you can travel to, let's say, the UK and still have sorry, that to teach. I'm sorry, no school in the UK will employ you uh, to teach because you have a license from a third world country like Ghana. Mm -hmm. Not even doctors that are certified here can immediately go and you know, carry out an operation, for example, in the United Kingdom. And so I think that argument is not strong enough. There are people who leave this country with PhDs, and they have to be reschooled when they travel to the first world. And so for me, I think it would have been better we understood the idiosyncratic or unique problems within this sector and, and then tackled it rather than creating this fantasy of, oh, you have this, it's just like an international driver's license. Wherever you go in the world, you can drive. I'm sorry. You can't drive anywhere you go in the world. Exactly. Yes, because every jurisdiction has its own unique standards and requirements. And finally, Mr. President, um, what about those who only have the ingenuity or the natural knack to teach? There have been wonderful teachers at various levels who not necessarily uh, would be from the crop uh, of those who have gone through training and they go into the private schools. Have private schools at any point in time required this licensure, you know, certification before employing teachers? No. Um, I th what the NTC is trying to do um, is that um, they, are, they, they want to, uh, as a matter of, um, 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 as a matter of agency, get all schools. For instance, if you have a school where you don't have um, a te trained teacher or a teacher that ha has a license, they would have someone like a, like a mentor within the within the catchment area to be like um, to form, form of uh, supervised activities of teachers within within the area, and that's the private schools. That is what um, the NTC plans to do. Per the discussion we had in 2018 with the, with the um, headship of the National Teaching Council. So for private schools, so you know what the, what the uh, structures the country uh, education system is supposed to build for private school is that at least they should get some kind of uh, formal training, not necessarily being going to the training colleges or going to university to pursue education, but to get some kind of training for those private schools so that they are recognized. Because most of them are doing a fantastic job in this country. Most of the good uh, schools we have here are the private schools. They are the private schools. Exactly. You exactly. So why do we neglect them? It is only at the SHS level, public schools outshine That's correct. private schools. That's correct. Anything beyond, below that is the, is the private, private schools. School that, yes. And these are some are SHS leavers or some people who, for want of a job, have a degree but still would want to go to the classroom and teach. So, Mr. President, I can't speak for the uh, decision makers on education, but I think uh, we need to do a lot more thinking uh, into this thing so that we do we take steps that will benefit everybody. Exactly. Inclusive, mm -hmm. Mr. President, I'm sure there are so many of your colleagues who look up to you as their math piece and their leader. What soothing words, uh, finally, would you have for them? And what would you tell decision makers as well? Yes, um, I want to t tell our students that um, they should be rest assured. We are still in touch with um, um, the decision makers. But anytime I meet them, they, they, they meet me with their um, challenges. Although I am a former president, they still come to me. I mean, my, I'm a household name, so they meet me all the time. Or like you mentioned, when you're in office, you mentioned licensure, you mentioned this, you said it's a good policy. And now we have read the examination and we don't, we don't get uh, posted. So what do we do? So I tell them to all, I mean, relax and be patient. We are we're really working very hard and we're trying to organize some transition exercises for our students in collaboration with uh, the National Teaching Council so that at least we get much, most of the students educated on what licensure is all about. We also engage the NTC to um, lobby um, to, so that at least they look at the issues that um, is a concern, are becoming concerns to students, especially distance students. Okay, always a pleasure to have you, sir. Thank you for having me. President Abdel Salam Al Hassan uh, is always a breath of fresh air to listen to. Uh, so we come your way next time with our favorite guest, uh, Stay Blessed, and bye bye.